So, uh, patent litigation in India is broadly consist of three stages. The first stage begins with the institution of the suit by the patentee. The plaintiff filed the plaintiff the plaint filed by the patentee is ordinarily accompanied with an application seeking an interim injunction. Upon upon the suit being listed for the first time before court, the court would consider it if the case merits the issuance of notice to the defendant along with an order directing ex parte ad interim injunction against the defendant from carrying out any activity that may infringe the patentee's right. Once the court, once the court issue notice, it would also give a fresh date for the defendant to appear and put forth their case. In the instance, the court directs an ad interim injunction against the defendant. The defendant may opt to file an application seeking vacation of the injunction order. So once the patentee, patentee's application seeking an ad interim injunction and the defendant's application seeking vacation of the injunction orders has been decided by the court, the court progresses on to conducting a case management hearing. So uh, in a case management hearing, the court frame issues and time and fixed timelines schedules for various parts of the trial. This would include the timelines for filing of the list of witness, filing the affidavit of the respective witnesses of the parties, completion of cross examination of the witness of the both the parties. So the second stage constitute the trial of the matter and the third and final stage is that of final arguments before the judge after which the court pronounced decree deciding the rights of the parties in the suit. We will endeavor to give you a flavor of trial and final arguments during our session. So without much ado, let's straight away take you to the second stage. So uh, this mock trial will be conducted by our team at KNS Partners and the team members and their roles are like, uh, so myself Amit Kohli and I'll be the narrator for the today's mock trial. Now we have a Satyam Rathor who will be the plaintiff's counsel, Mr. Abhishek Jain, defendant's counsel, uh, Ms. Sarahak who will be the plaintiff's witness, Mr. Pramod Kumar who will be the defendant's witness, then we have a Mr. Karan Singh who will be the court commissioner and Mr. Jitin M. George who will be the judge for today's mock trial. For today's session, we have selected a patent that was granted in the year 2015 which involves a drinking vessel suitable for use as baby fitting bottle. The mock trial was set in the year 2023-2024. Uh, I'll now brief about the facts of the case. The, plenty, the plaintiff patentee Ms. Sarahak is a mechanical engineer based out of Indore, Madhya Pradesh. She had been a working mother and had managed to take care of her baby girl independently along with her professional work commitments. In the year 2002, she was facing a problem particularly while feeding her baby girl through then available feeding bottles. While Ms. Sara used to remain busy in other works and couldn't pay attention while feeding her baby girl, the chocolate flavored milk inside the feeding bottles used to get leaked, thereby leaving chocolatey, flavored, chocolatey colored stains on the bedsheet, carpet, sofa, etc. Further, quite a number of times, Ms. Sara also observed that. Her baby used to cry a lot without any obvious cause. While researching on various reasons that can cause this problem, Ms. Sara discovered that swallowing so much air while drinking milk from baby feeding bottle caused formation of gas bubbles in the stomach of the baby that makes the baby cry for long hours. That is a type of colic problem. She bought multiple baby feeding bottles then available in the market. But all the available products in the market leaked to some de degree and also was not anti-colic in the nature. 
At that time, the idea of leak-proof anti-colic baby feeding bottles was known to the manufacturer, but no one had come up with a design that was completely satisfactory. Further, Miss Sarah also visited few of her friends' house and got and got to know that they were also facing the same problem due to the child's inherent difficulty in handling such baby feeding bottles and all of them were searching for a better, bo better bottle that will prevent the milk inside the bottle from getting onto the fl floor or carpet, bed sheet, sofa, etc. And at that, and at the same time, have the features of anti cooling drinking vessel that is the design of the bottle should be in such a way so as to reduce air swallowed during feeds, lessen gas bubbles in the stomach and slow down food intake and in this way have the potential to reduce any colic crying related to gas and overfeeding. So consequently, Miss Sara decided to develop and, de and devise a better baby feeding bottle that would not leak even if we even if it was turned upside down for longer period and have anti-colic features. So Miss Sarah built a prototype with, with a slit wall and an anti-colic bag that worked so well that it could be left upside down for weeks on the end without spilling any of its contents and also prevent the baby from swallowing unnecessary air. So in the year 2003, she filed a patent application before the Indian Patent Office to protect her invention of using a rubber slit wall to control the flow of milk through the spout of the bottle and using an anti-colic bag preventing the milk from getting oxidized. The patent was granted in the year 2015. Thereafter, Miss Sara came to know about the defendant company offering similar product and hence Miss Sara immediately contacted her attorney to prevent any misuse of her patented product and accordingly filed a suit seeking permanent injunction and damages against the defendant company. And we have a plethora of products that the company sells in India and across the globe. And one such very important product to us is the <coughs> spill-proof baby feeding bottle called the nappy bottle. The company sells close to 20 million nappy bottles all around the globe and around 9 million in India. And this invention is protected by patent IN123456, in which I am also the inventor. Let me give you a brief of the patent. Uh, these are the documents related to the patent. This includes the patent certificate, the claims, and the specification. Uh, so the patent relates to a drinking vessel that can be used as a baby feeding bottle that would not leak, even if it was turned upside down for a longer period. There is another innovative feature in this, which is the anti-colic bag-like structure that prevents the milk from being contaminated by air. In the patented product, the nappy bottles, a rubber slit valve has been combined with the spout of the drinking vessel. When the child wants a drink, his or her suction only would open the valve and at times the valve would remain closed. So in the figure one of the patent, if you see, the pat, uh, it's a sectional view of the drinking vessel and it comprises of an open mouth, generally cupped, cup-shaped uh, container and a lid. The valve prevents the flow of the liquid from the interior of the container through the mouthpiece unless a predetermined level of lip pressure is applied and suction is applied to the mouthpiece by the baby. Then figure two is the plan view of the valve assembly of the drinking vessel. So basically, the valve assembly comprises of a generally disc-shaped member, which is suitably uh, molded from latex or silicon, rubber, or any other plastic. So in an alternative arrangement, the central boss may also be integratively formed with the lid. And the valve assembly one is provided with a central opening for receiving the boss on the lid. So although the member 10, if you see, may be permanently fitted to the lid, but for ease of cleaning, it is also detachable from the lid by removal of this boss 11 from the opening 12. Now, around the periphery, the valve assembly disc member is provided with an integral lip or thickened region in the form of a ring. 
This, is, this not only provides strength at the edge, but also provides a region which, since the disc is given in a diameter greater than the interior diameter of the lid, results in compression at the edges, so that the valve assembly disc member provides a sealing effect around the periphery. And in effect, the lid and the container serve to add additionally reduce the likelihood of any spillage from the bottle. Uh, so as I pointed out earlier, there's a, another innovative feature in this, that is the thread which seals the nipple to the bottle and an inner lining of the bottle in the form of an anticolic bag-like structure, which can be seen in figure three. The anticolic bag is provided with grooves on the outside of its neck to allow air to enter the bottle, thus facilitating the collapse of the bag. When the baby is feeding from the bottle, some air, uh, air bubbles may enter the bottle when the feeding stops. So essential characteristic of the anticolic bag is that it allows the air to enter the bottle as the liquid leaves when the baby is fed and it avoids any intake of the air by the baby or the milk getting contaminated by the air because there is no contact. So this product has been very successful from the start and the sales of the nappy bottle exponentially increased since its launch in 2013, especially since we started marketing them aggressively. And not only the sales numbers but also the revenue of the company has grown exponentially. So, however, in the year 2021, we saw that there was a sudden dip in our sales. And our sales team drew our attention towards the sales statistics. And the sharp drop in the sales figures, you know, really got us worried. So we tried to dig deeper as to what is the reason behind this dip. And a team was formulated which worked, uh, to, uh, you know, with the marketing team to find out a reason for this uh, sharp decrease in sales. To our surprise, we found out that there's another company which is selling a similar product in the Indian market. And the product was completely identical to the feeding bottles that we were selling, and uh, which is covered by this patent that I just told you about. And this product is being sold by a company called Bachpan Baby Care Limited. So due to our sales pred uh, predictions, we've also been able to project the sales for the next five to seven years. But this dip in sales has shocked us and you know our figures have all gone wrong and it is hampering our company, we're uh, uh, facing losses. So that's why I wanted to engage you as our counsel. And uh, we've, all the information that we've collected regarding this is also with those documents. Okay. So uh, it was nice meeting you, Ms. Sarah, today. So uh, your team had also briefed me about this issue which your company, you know, is facing and uh, they had submitted us few documents also, uh, very basic one to, to let us have you know, a basic idea of it. And from our side also, we did certain research, my team did that, and we did find out that this particular uh, infringing company, they are based out in Delhi, and uh, we also looked into the data which is publicly available on the website of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and we see that you know, this is a company which was incorporated in around uh, November 2010. And uh, they have a uh, branch office also in Chennai. And uh, as your team had briefed me about this issue, you know, so we tried to procure this product also. So we did procure it from uh, one of the uh, e-commerce website. Uh, we got that product and we also sent it to, so I had a word with your, one of your team members also. So as per our, uh, we, we informed them that we are sending this product to one of the labs. Yeah, yeah, you guys told me about it. In fact, my go-ahead was also taken before right. sending it to the lab. So we sent it to the lab to test the quality of the product, the materials which have been used in manufacturing those products. And uh, we, we just got the lab reports also, and which shows that the parameters, you know, the materials which, they, which has been used in that product. So that lab report is also there. And further to make sure that... Uh, our understanding is correct about the infringing product. We also ap approached one of the professors in a reputed uh, university, ABC University, and uh, we sought his opinion on on the on, on, on issue of infringement. And you know, to uh, we got to know, and he was also of the view that this particular product by Bachpan is something which definitely infringes your uh, granted patent because most of the features fall in the granted claims. Okay, that, that's good news that we know that it falls within the scope of the granted patent because uh, we would want to go ahead with an infringement action. Right, and actually, Ms. Sara, that would be the best course of action to take, filing an infringement suit. 
And while filing an infringement suit, although uh, you know our, our, our advice is to go ahead and directly go ahead and file the infringement suit, uh, we just wanted to brief you also what on other options you may have so that you can weigh down your options correctly. Sure. Uh, you can go ahead and you can issue a legal notice also to to a second party. Have you have you interacted with them earlier? With yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just coming to that. So the idea was that we actually started with sending a notice to the infringer, and we already approached the. Uh, uh, this company, Bachpan Baby Care, for taking a license from us in 2017, but there was no response. And we, uh, you know, just a month ago, we've already issued a cease and desist notice to them uh, because, you know, we, we think that they are already aware that they're infringing our patent and they're just avoiding us. Yeah, so that means that we, you had already communicated your displeasure to them and actually as a goodwill you had also approached them to you know grant them a license for your product and as i understand correctly they didn't proceed with it right they have not even responded right and when uh, when you became aware of this infringing uh, product in the market in around uh, 2021 i believe and uh, which they have started apparently from 2021 that's what we we uh, got the report from the investigating team in the market Okay. But since when you got to know about it recently, you had issued a legal notice also to them to cease and desist, and you know they refused. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Sara, in this case, I mean, then I think you have, a, I think you have uh, done all from your side to make sure that the matter gets settled amicably. It's therefore, our advice would be that we can go ahead and directly file a suit before the court for patent infringement, and. You know, as you are aware also, and we had sent this brief note also to one to your team member. See, now there are certain requirements for pre-suit institution mediation also, you know, when there, there's a commercial dispute. And if uh, I believe that we would be going ahead by filing a commercial suit, then in that case, since you have uh, tried down, uh, at, you have attempted to settle the matter amicably already, and even a month back you had issued a legal notice, then yeah. in that case, I believe we can make out a case before the court stating that you know this requirement for a pre-suit institution mediation should be exempted and accordingly an ex parte uh, order may be considered by the court. Yeah, so that would be great. I mean, you would be the best <coughs> person to judge how to go about it. And we've read the brief note that you've sent and we fairly agree with the advice uh, that we should be filing a suit and you let me know whatever assistance I can further provide. Sure, sure. So, Ms. Sara, you also told that your sale figures have, you know, dipped down a bit. And, uh, and this, there are high chances that you know this dip is attributable to these infringing activities. So what I will do, one of my team members will send you the list of documents which we would be requiring to file the suit, and especially uh, to make a case before the court that we are suffering losses and which cannot be quantified, you know, in monetary terms because the losses can be anticipated to be huge. You may also share with us a certificate maybe from uh, one of your financial team member or maybe from a CA yeah, to, sub to show the dip in the sales so that we can make out a case before the court adequately. And the other documentations, uh, the list will be shared. You can share it with my team. And we will start preparing the pleadings and for execution, we let you know. So that's the course of action we would be taking, Ms. Sara. So we would be very happy to assist you in that. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, and thank you for the advice. I will be waiting for all the for the list of documents and any other draft that you share, and we can take this forward sure, from there. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, plaintiff, along with its counsel, has approached Delhi High Court to protect its legal rights. My lord, we have filed the present suit uh, in relation to a significant patent infringement which my client has come across. And uh, just to give, give you a brief about the matter, my lord. So my client has been granted patent number 123456. I have produced the legal proceeding certificate also, which substantiate the grant of patent in favor of my client. And this grant was in 2015. And the patent is still valid, it, it is in force, and there is no pre-grant or post-grant which is, or revocation which is uh, pending adjudication, my lord. My lord, to give you a brief background, please, uh, my lord, if you can come to document number 20, document number three, my lord, 
and you'll see my company, uh, my, my client, that's Konotono Private Limited. It's a multinational company of good repute. It has businesses across continent. And my lord, we have also produced, we have also procured the infringing products uh, within the territorial jurisdiction of this court, my lord. And uh, the pictures of that particular product we have produced at, <laughs> as document number four. We have also submitted the relevant invoices <coughs> which was delivered in the course of procurement to us. My lord, so this particular product, which is the defendant's product, my lord, and the pay suit patent, which has been granted in favor of my client. So this is regarding a milk feeding bottle for, for, for babies. We have also uh, produced a, a, a sample of the infringing product, the defendant's uh, infringing product, my lord, that had been submitted to the court. My lord, if you see, all the features, my lord, uh, and my lord, also one more thing, we have also submitted the uh, claim chart mapping, that is document number seven, my lord. My lord, if you look into the uh, claim chart mapping, as well as the product of the defendant, my lord, it is crystal clear that the product of the defendant is identical to, this, to the suit patent which has been granted to my client. All the features of the, of the defendant product are something which are exactly claimed in the suit patent. More so, my lord, what we did after procuring this product to be doubly sure that, you know, our thought process regarding infringement is correct, we got this product tested in an independent government recognized laboratory to see the materials and the features of this particular product. And we were surprised to see that all the features are copied, my lord. Apart from this, we also approached an independent expert in this particular field of uh, <coughs> and uh, of from a reputed college and uh, as per the affidavit of that expert that has been also filed my lord as document number 15 there as per that affidavit also my lord the expert is also of the clear opinion that all the features of the defendant's product are something which are exactly claimed in the suit patent my lord my lord my lord, due to these infringing activities of the defendant, my client is suffering huge monetary losses. In fact, the sales of my client's products have decreased significantly, and my client is suffering huge loss, my lord. And this whole action of infringement by the defendant, my lord, it is a clearly a malafide action. And to substantiate that, I have produced certain email communications also, copies of which are document number uh, 18, my lord, my client, after the grant of the patent, had uh, reached out to the defendant actually and certain other third parties also to, to grant license to them. And uh, the defendant showed no interest at that point of time. This was in 2017. Post that, in around uh, three months back, my lord, my client became aware that this particular entity has started selling these infringing products on uh, e-commerce website. After knowing this, in Despite of knowing that this particular entity is infringing my, uh, the patent of my client, my client again sent a cease and desist notice to them, asking them to stop using the, selling these infringing products. Despite of the second legal notice also, my lord, the defendant paid no heed. They are still blatantly selling these products on e-commerce website, and we have produced this particular product from samson.com, uh, e-commerce uh, platform, we have procured this product. So this whole, the, the, this whole scope of infringement, my lord, it clearly falls within the ambit of malified intent of the defendant that despite knowing about the patent as early as in 2017, despite being approached by my client in 2017 for the, from, for, for the license, despite my client bringing to their notice the infringing activities, they're still continuing to do so, my lord and my client is continuing to suffer losses and we anticipate that the losses in the future will be huge. So my lord, in, in, in this context, my lord, my submission would be that my client has fulfilled all the requirements for grant of an ex parte temporary injunction, my lord, because the prima facie case of infringement is proved uh, if you look into the claim chart mapping as well as the product also, my lord. And my lord, the balance of convenience also falls in favor of my client because at this point of time, they're selling on the e-commerce website. In future, they might expand also. And we are suffering losses because uh, the infringement is uh, very clear. And apart from that, my lord, the urgency, you know, uh, falls from the point that the sales are actually 
uh, dipping for my client, especially in India as well as in certain countries where my client is exporting her product. So, my lord, in this kind of scenario, my submission would be that an ex parte ad interim order should be granted at this point of time to prevent further damages to my client, which of course would be un, you know, unquantified, uh, quantifiable in the future if this infringing activity continues, my lord. That's all from my side, my lord. I've heard the counsel for the plaintiff. Upon a review of the entire material on record and the submissions by the counsel for the plaintiff, I find that the plaintiff has been able to prima facie establish that it is a proprietor of suit pattern number 123456 for baby feeding bottles, which has been granted in 2015. The plaintiff has also been able to prima facie show that the defendant has infringed the plaintiff's suit patent. Plaintiff has also filed documents to showcase that the defendant was aware of the existence of the suit patent since at least 2017. Further, the plaintiff has been able to demonstrate considerable losses as a result of the defendant's infringing activities. Plaintiff has also satisfied this court regarding the exemption of the requirement of pre suit institution mediation. The plaintiff has shown that it had sent an initial offer to the defendant in 2017, offering a license over the suit patent to which no response was received from the defendant. The plaintiff subsequently having become aware of the defendant's infringing activities in late November 2023, issued a legal notice to the defendant seeking a cease and desist from infringing activities. Despite of the issuance of the legal notice, the defendant didn't heed to the plaintiff's call. The plaintiff has also been able to demonstrate loss of revenue suffered by it in the recent year, which it alleges is attributable to the defendant's infringing activities, and submits apprehensions of further loss unless the defendant is restrained. Therefore, I'm of the view that pre-institution mediation can be exempted in this particular case. I'm also of the considered opinion the plaintiff has made out a prima facie case in its favor. The balance of convenience is also established in the favor of the plaintiff. And if an order of interim, ex parte inter, interim injunction is not granted in favor of the plaintiff, the plaintiff may suffer irreparable losses. The plaintiff is thus entitled to the relief of ex parte ad interim injunction against the infringement of a suit patent by the defendant as paid for by it in its interim application. Summons of the suit be issued to the defendant. Much obliged, my lord. So now defendant's representative upon receiving summons from the court has approached its counsel. Hey, I have said, I just received your number from one of my friends. <coughs> so uh, basically, uh, I'm a bit uh, uh, disturbed also. Uh, I am a CTO of a company uh, called Bachpan Baby Care Private Limited and uh, just yesterday I received a summons from a court uh, that, uh, see, uh, I am, our company is basically uh, produce a product and sells a product uh, called Seki uh, baby bottle, right? So uh, just yesterday I received a summon from court that uh, our company is infringing someone's patent, some other company's patent. But you know, uh, the fact of the matter is uh, all the, uh, I've gone through the su uh, suit patent and also uh, the uh, whatever paper book and the patent they've filed. Uh, the features in the patent have already been known in the market for long, I think maybe uh, 10 to 20 years. Uh, so uh, I, I've just uh, uh, came up with the suit patent and the summons. And if you can go through and if you can advise uh, primarily, because the court has also passed an ex parte order that I, I cannot sell you know, my product in the market on e-commerce website and all that. So if you can please advise. Yeah, please have a seat and just relax. Just Thank give you. me the Thank copy of the complete suit paper book along with the documents and all that what has been submitted by the plaintiff. And before we devise any strategy to fight against the suit which has been filed against your company, let me uh, bring it very clear to you. So we, in a suit for patent infringement, generally, we have two defenses which can be taken by a defendant. First is, we can take a plea of non-infringement. By taking a plea of non-infringement, it means that your product is actually not falling within the claims of the patentee or the plaintiff, okay. so that your product is outside the scope of the claims and you are not infringing the patent. That's one side of the defense. The other side of the defense is that we have a remedy provided by the law to file a counterclaim challenging the validity of the patent. Basically, if I'll add to it, basically in the market, uh, the features are already known. So what we're referring to counterclaim to, grant, uh, to challenge the validity of the patent. 
so it can be i think uh, it is yeah so since these patent infringement suits these are very technical because of the technology involved highly specialized inventions the products and all that so let my team go through the complete paper suit, suit paper book and then let my team find if there are any prior arts available so that we can raise a credible challenge to the validity of the patent. No, but what to do? Uh, the code have issued ex party order. I so have regarding, to that, products, regarding that, just relax, just relax. Regarding that, we will also move an application seeking vacation of the ex parte. So how much time it will take means, you know, uh, I have to immediately back up my yeah, products. Let us, let us draft that application and let us present our case before the court and then let's see. What happens? For now, I, what I have to do? I so, have let, to let us, at the first place, we will just draft an application seeking modification or the uh, removal of that ex parte order and then we will devise the strategy accordingly. Uh, you know, how much time it will take uh, to modify? I think it should take one to two months. So, till that, I have to back up my product? You, you okay. have to back up your product, right. For uh, one month, two months? For one month, till that order is in force. Okay, so that's a difficult task, but anyway. Right. But you don't need to worry, we will devise a strategy. Yes, can't we do that uh, for that one month, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking off from all the website will take uh, one week? You take weeks. it down because at the end of the day, you have to comply with the court order. And then, uh, like, our team has also in the meanwhile searched few prior art documents. One prior art document which can raise a credible challenge to the validity of the patent is the container with spill proof closure. So I think it contains all the features which are there in the granted claims and it was already available in the public domain. The other prior art which my team has found is the baby's feeding apparatus. It again has the same features and this particularly relates to that uh, invention, particularly the spill proof invention. So it has all the features. Let's move ahead and then let's approach the court and take our time to file, to move an appropriate application, to file the replies, to file the written statement and also Time to file the counterclaim. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then. So, my lords, uh, I am representing the defendant in this case. Uh, during the last occasion, the Honorable Court has passed an ex parte order against my client. So, I take liberty of this Honorable Court to file a reply to the Order 39 Rule 1 and 2 application. Along with, I am also taking liberty to file or moving an application for vacation of, the, of that ex parte order. And accordingly, as per the timelines fixed by the Commercial Codes Act, my lords, I will be filing the written statement to the plane. And my lords, I also take the liberty to file counterclaim seeking, uh, challenging the validity of the plane, uh, the suit pattern. My lord, uh, uh, today uh, only my first opinion before this court. So uh, today only we, the ex party order can be modified because. You know, for a lot of the submissions should come from the advocate. I mean, the infringer no. is himself. Right. So, my lords, we will be moving an appropriate application, and I just—it's my humble submission before this court. Just, just give us a short date so that uh, the issue regarding the interim injunction can be decided at the earliest. I've heard the counsel for the, the, counsel for the parties. Let the written statement be filed within stipulated time. Uh, the order is stands and is not vacated till the next day. The counsel for the defendant appears, has filed his vakalatnama, objections to the interim injunction application, an application for vacation of interim injunction and written statement. I've gone through the defense. If both parties agree, Rather than deciding the interim injunction application, we can have an expedited trial and decide this case within six months. What do we have to say? My Lord, we are agreeable to that. We are agreeable to that, my Lord, provided uh, I, we believe that the interim injunction application uh, order will be enforced till that point. Order of time. will be enforced till the decision. Much of obliged. We'll and go also for a my Lord, its strict timelines should be fixed so I that the cross-examination, the trial, and that. all that is concluded in a fixed time. With the consent of the parties, this court is keeping the interim injunction application in abeyance and directing the parties to go through an expedited trial for final adjudication of the matter. I also frame the following issues. Whether the plaintiff establishes that the defendant is infringing the suit. Whether the defendant establishes that the suit patent is invalid. Damages, if any. Accordingly, the following timelines are being fixed for case management hearing. Cross-examination to be concluded between 20th February 2024 
to 25th February 2024. Final arguments to be concluded by March 31st, 2024. With the consent of both parties, evidence is directed to be recorded before the local commissioner. Accordingly, Mr. Karan Singh is appointed local commissioner. His fees is fixed as INR 2 lakh rupees to be paid, borne equally by both the parties. Registry to notify the appointment of local commissioner within two working days from this date. List the matter for final arguments on 31st March 2024. So the, the trial will thus commence now where one of the most important procedure in the phase is the cross-examination. The court has appointed a local commissioner, Mr. Karan Singh, uh, as a court commissioner who will preside the cross-examination of the witness of both the sides. So let's begin the cross-examination of the plaintiff witness, the inventor, by the defendant's counsel. The cross-examination begins with the local commissioner administering the oath of the witness. So, if my lords may allow, uh, can I begin the cross-examination of the plaintiff's witness? Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Sarahak, I believe you have your expert affidavit before you. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, my first question is, can you identify the signature in this affidavit? Yes, I have signed above the term deponent and on every page as well. And who has drafted this affidavit? My legal counsel has drafted the affidavit uh, after consultation with me. Please see your affidavit and tell me the place of notarization of this affidavit. Uh, it's Delhi. Ms. Sarahak, I put it to you that you were not in Delhi. Instead, you were in Indore on the date of notarization of this affidavit. This is going beyond the affidavit. This objection, you object to it. This objection is to be decided by the Honorable Court at the time of final arguments. The witness may answer. Okay. Uh, I disagree. I was actually in Delhi on the date of the notarization of the affidavit and if required, I can submit a valid proof for it because I have a record of my flight tickets from Indore to Delhi at that time. My next question is, who assisted you in the alleged invention contained in patent number 123456? No one. It was my sole invention. Uh, what are your educational qualifications? I have a degree in mechanical engineering from ABC College Indore. I put it to you that you are not technically qualified to depose the present affidavit. Is it correct? I disagree. Have you done any research in the field of product designing? No, uh, but I would like to add something to my answer. Well, it's, my simple question is, have you done any research in the field of product designing? And I believe the answer has come. There is nothing new to or something to add to this what, answer. The response of my, uh, my client is something which is material to the question. So they, she may be allowed to answer to that in counsels, any addition which has counsels, to be made. Counsels. I'm allowing the witness to speak. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to add that I have pursued a certification course in product designing. And prior to founding this company, I've also worked for an MNC wherein I was responsible for their product design. So, Ms. Sarahak, have you ever mapped any claims of a patent with any product prior to this litigation? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, along with my counsel, we have mapped the claims of this granted patent with that of the products of Advanced Baby Products Private Limited, which ultimately that company ended up taking a license from us for practicing the aforesaid patent. So, were you involved in any patent litigation as far as this suit patent is considered before this particular suit? Uh, not exactly a patent litigation, but we did send a legal notice to Advanced Baby Products Private Limited because they were manufacturing and selling the baby feeding bottles incorporating my invention. So pursuant to that, the said company, as I already said, has agreed to take a license from our company. I put it to you that the defendant's product is different from what has been claimed in the suit patent. Is it correct? No, I disagree. It is identical to the claims of the granted patent and the defendant has simply copied my invention and is violating my IP rights. I put it to you that you have not analyzed the defendant's product and the present affidavit is merely based on assumptions. Is it correct? No, I have analyzed the defendant's product in detail and the claim mapping chart has also been filed before this court and it is on record. 
can you please explain how did you procure or lay your hands over the defendant's product? I bought it myself from the, an e-commerce platform, samzon.com. And is your product available on any e-commerce platform? No. So, I put it to you that you have not worked or commercialized your patent. Is it correct? No, it is not correct. I am selling my products through retail outlets and we have substantial <coughs> sales. And Ms. Sarah, based on your education qualifications, and I could see you have no background or the requisite qualification as far as the patent laws are concerned. I put it to you that you have no knowledge of patents law and you cannot interpret a patent document. Uh, I disagree. Given that I am an inventor myself, I have an understanding of patents. But I do not claim to have any specialized knowledge of patent law. So are you aware of the concepts of novelty and obviousness? Seriously object to this. This is a purely legal question, my lord. Counsel, How can my client answer to that? Counsel, this has to be decided by the Honourable Court at the stage of final arguments. The witness may answer. Uh, I was extensively involved in the prosecution of this patent, uh, 123456, and therefore I have a fair understanding of concepts of novelty and obviousness. Uh, since you have said that you were extensively involved in the prosecution of this patent, can you please let us know your involvement during the prosecution of the patent? Uh, I was involved during the drafting and the reviewing of the patent application wherein I had provided the technical guidance to the patent agent to clearly bring out the novel and inventive features in the patent application. Further, my role during the prosecution was to explain the invention, particularly the inventive features to the patent agent. And during the course of the prosecution, I had also explained how my invention was innovative over the existing baby feeding bottles. I had also assisted the patent agent in replying to the technical objections that were raised in the FER report, the first examination report, which was issued by the patent office. Uh, so let's take a pause here. Just to put it out, these type of questions, which are just the broad or the open-ended questions, should generally be avoided to be asked to the witnesses during a cross-examination. What are the novel and inventive features in your baby feeding bottle as claimed? Uh, the mechanism to avoid spillage of milk or any other liquid inside the bottle unless a certain amount of force or pressure gets applied on the nipple of the bottle together with the feature of the anti-colic bag that allows the air to enter the bottle as the liquid leaves it when the baby is being fed, thus avoiding any intake of the air by the baby. Do you mean to say that no other baby feeding bottle had the same mechanism as explained by you? Yes. Do you also mean that there was no baby feeding bottle existing prior to your invention that prevent any leakage or spillage from such bottles? No. Please see this document, document D1, which is a prior art published in 1990 and which, has, which I have filed along with my counterclaim this is marked as document D1, the prior art D1. It discloses a container having a spill-proof closer used in dispensing liquid beverages. I put it to you that your patent is obvious in view of this prior art document D1. Is it correct? No, I disagree. The claims of the patent are not obvious uh, over D1 for the reason that D1 is not enabling a flat membrane after molding or otherwise attaching the flat thin membrane to the inner surface of the spout uh, will have internal stresses created which would cause the membrane to deform and therefore uh, slit will remain open or at least will no longer close in a liquid tight manner as it happens in my invention. Please see the other document which is marked as document D2 which is a prior art published in the year 1995, way before the date of filing of your patent application. It clearly discloses a baby's feeding apparatus with a limited entry of air between the collar 4 and the container and into the container to equalize pressure within the container with atmospheric pressure. I put it to you that your patent is obvious in view of this particular teaching disclosed in prior art 2. I disagree. The claims of the patent are not obvious over D2 for the reason that the collar of D2 performs a purely retaining function 
and not a closing off function and cannot be equated with the lid of a baby feeding bottle as disclosed in the patent. Moreover, the bottle as claimed in the patent has a permanently open spout which addresses the problem as envisaged in the prior art at the time of filing the patent application. Unlike the feeding bottle of D2 which has a feeding teat which is not open but closed by a slit valve and therefore it does not address the problem which is uh, intended and is being solved by the patent. Ms. Sarahak, please just go through the answers which you have provided for question numbers 22 and 23 in respect of the prior arts D1 and D2. Just take your time. Hope you have gone through the, your answers which you have provided for question number 22 and 23. Yes. So now, I put it to you that you have merely combined the known features of prior art documents D1 and D2 to arrive to the alleged invention and therefore your patent is obvious. No, I disagree. The prior art document D1 does not have a valve, means as present in my granted patent. And the prior art document uses a thin membrane instead, as I've already explained in my answer to question 22. Further, the prior art document D2 has a valve which allows the flow in the direction from the container and does not say anything about preventing spillage. And further, my uh, patent uh, also envisages a unique feature, which is also an inventive feature of an anti-colic bag-like structure which prevents the milk from any contact with air. Uh, this is not present in either of the documents, D1 or D2. So, Ms. Sarahak, you have also submitted my client's product along with your suit paper book. This is the product which you have submitted, the infringing product? Yes. Can you see that? Yes. I hope you have also gone through the features of this product. Yes. Can you show or demonstrate how my client's product or the defendant's product is infringing your patent? Uh, if you see that the defendant has made a bottle exactly similar to my bottle, which uses a wall means to prevent the spillage and uses an anti-colic bag-like structure to prevent the inside milk from getting oxi uh, oxidized. And when did you introduce your bottles? Uh, around the end of 2013. I put it to you that your alleged invention was already publicly known. Is it correct? I disagree. I put it to you that the underlying product of the invention of your suit patent was published and was being offered for sale in India before the filing date of the suit patent. No, I disagree. I put it to you that your product was available in your shop before the filing of the suit patent. I disagree. I put it to you that you have not invented the invention as claimed in the suit patent. I disagree. I am the inventor of this patent. I put it to you that the valve and the anti-colic back feature claimed in the suit patent are not novel as on the date of priority. I disagree. The, these features were novel as on the date of priority of this patent and therefore a patent has been granted by the Indian Patent Office. So my lords, I hereby conclude my cross-examination of the plaintiff's witness. Very well. Uh, the plaintiff's witness cross-examination sta now stands concluded. I now direct the plaintiff's counsel to cross-examine the defendant's witness. Definitely, ma'am. So, uh, Mr. Tej Prakash, right? Yeah. Mr. Tej Prakash, can you identify your signatures in the affidavit which you have filed? Yeah, I have signed on all the pages and wherever the deponent term has been written. Okay. So, Mr. Tej Prakash, I put it to you that this affidavit has not been drafted under your instruction. What do you no, have no, to say about it? has been drafted under my instruction, definitely. So, uh, what are your educational qualifications? Okay, so uh, I have done my B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering and thereafter I pursued my MBA. Okay, and how long have been, have, have you been associated with this company Bachpan, which is the defendant okay, in the so, present matter? Uh, I joined this company in the year 2022 as CTO and still continuing in that position. And, uh, okay, so your designation is CTO, it yeah, you mean CTO to Yeah, CTO in this company. Okay, and uh, before joining this company as recent as 2020, Two, uh, where did you work prior to your association with the present company? 
Yeah, earlier I was uh, working at a company named Innovative Cars Private Limited. The, that particular company was dealing in high-end cars and manufacturing and selling of cars. And uh, for how long did you work with that company? It was almost five years. And uh, I believe that was your first job. Yeah, right? yeah that was my first job. And um, so, Mr. Tej Prakash, when was this uh, company Bachpan Incorporated? It was in 2010, my current company where I am a CTO. 2010. It was established into as a as recent incorporated in 2010. Okay, and uh, may I know what is the core area of your company's business? Yeah, our company basically works, uh, you know, in manufacturing and selling uh, product related to babies and infants, maybe toys, uh, you know, bottles uh, and all other products that uh, relates to babies and infants. And uh, can you please tell us from when have